Hello again. In this video, we'll be going through our motherboard, which is Asus Rampage VI Extreme. First of all, this motherboard is insane. If you look at the capability of this motherboard, this can even serve the enterprise level servers. I'll start with the CPU, CPU socket, which Asus uh, Rampage VI Extreme supports is Intel X series, which is uh, called as i9 as well. And it is 79XX series and 78XX series. That's what it supports. After CPU slot, I will talk about the DIMMs. This motherboard supports 128 GB, which is itself insane. You cannot directly connect DIMM any of this slot. Like for example, you put randomly here one DIMM and another one randomly here. You can't really do that. So there are mar markings on it. B1, B2, A1, A2. C2, C1, D2, D1. The B1 should go with the D1. Next, the B2 here, it should go with the D2. Then you have uh, A1 should go with the C1 and A2 should go with the C2. We are done with the CPU. We're done with the DIMM slots. Let's move ahead with the power connectors. Here you have a 24 pin power connector. As you can see, there is another one, a CPU power connector. Next, you have another power connector as for 12 volt. So these are the power connections which we have available on this motherboard. Going next, you see here DIMM2. DIMM2 slot in the sense what? By default, they have given an NVMe slot here. But if you want more NVMe devices, then you can 
buy a dim2 card and on on that you can insert the m2 cards now let's move next and let's talk about the pci so here we have a pci slots as you can see my sluggish graphics card which i want to change is already connected to it so this is pci3 we all know that there's nothing to talk about it going next what you see here is a start and a reset button so if you're using a open cabinet the motherboard is exposed to you you can directly use the start and reset buttons so that's what that's how it is so this is called as a slow mode button so this motherboard is a, a heaven for the ones those who are doing extreme overclocking so if you want to overclock your cpu you want to overclock your uh, ram your uh, nvme this is the motherboard for you so what it does basically suppose you have overclocked your cpu due to that you are not able to boot your system such scenarios can happen or system is crashing or something of that sort in that scenario what you can do you can simply uh, on this switch by default it's at the off state so you can on it what it will be doing it will be reducing the cpu frequency from the hardware level it will be re reducing the cpu frequency no need to go into the operating system or inside a bios and from there suppose you are not able to reach out to the bios because of this overclocking you are not able to reach inside a bios then what you can do you can simply switch on that button and what it will be doing it will reduce the cpu frequency and you will be able to boot up your system and then later on you can play with the overclocking settings you see this button here memory okay a small switch this i really like memory okay button what it does from uf ufi you overclock your system let's say for the sake of example let's say 3266 hertz if you have configured that speed but your uh, ram does not support it what will happen now you try to boot up your system it won't boot you just click on this main ok button so what will happen the moment you click on the main ok button it will restart the uh, motherboard and it will try to figure out the best suitable tuning for that particular dim it there's no guarantee it will work but it will try its best but i have tried it and it worked twice it worked next do you notice my pen here so there are two buttons one is safe boot another one is the retry button so the red one which you see here that is safe boot so what this safe boot does same story if you have overclocked your system and now you are not able to boot up then what it will be doing from uefi side whatever the safest settings available it will boot back to those settings now don't get confused with the slow mode button and the safe boot slow mode button is for the cpu specific whereas this safe boot button is specific to moving back most working uefi settings the bios settings there is a bios switch here the red color button which you see here that is a bios switch you have a two uefi chips on this system normally what happens one motherboard is equal to one bios chip and if that bios chip itself is corrupted you're gone now what you need to do you have to contact your vendor ship the motherboard to them and they might be able to figure out what went wrong and they will replace it maybe but in this case it will switch to the another uh, uefi chip that's insane that's very good next i will talk about some of the leds so there are so many leds they have given i will not be able to talk each and every led you see the tip of my pen there are four leds these are called as q leds so the four leds i said so the first one show the information about your cpu the next one will show information about your memory and the third one will show about vga and the fourth one will show about the boot so what the first one is cpu if cpu is not working the way it should so if there is some error that particular led will will light up it will be on same way if something wrong with the memory that will light on if something wrong with the vga that will light on if something wrong with the your boot the fourth one will light on suppose you are you consider like you are not getting a uh, display at all so if there is no display you won't be able to see any error code or anything in that scenario you can so you'll be able to figure out that way next is even going insane you have a dashboard here you have a dashboard here small i guess it's a one or two inch in size it keeps showing you the error codes even so this these they, these were uh, qleds now there are dim leds as well so you'll find dim leds at this end so what they do i have connected these two uh, dims now only those leds will light up it tells you like which dims are enabled and which are not next i will talk about pcie leds so along with the pcie leds you will find one switch also here you see it here there are four switches they have given four pci slots available i want to disable one of the slot i will be able to just switch it on and that particular pci slot will be disabled and whichever is disabled to tell us whichever is disabled there are four leds also they have given there yeah so next is this one amazing option which i would like to discuss five pin connector available and on that it's written tpm that is trusted platform module tpm now this is really enterprise level 
feature available if you know about uefi secure boot if you are hurt like if you are booting a windows 8 or windows 10 system they have given a security to it that particular bootloader is locked with the microsoft's private key and the public key is available inside the uefi now this is something very technical microsoft's um, bootloader which is bcd boot configuration data will be locked or signed with the microsoft's private key which will be with the microsoft team obviously and the public key of that inside your uefi okay, so what will happen when you will boot up your system it will take out that public key it will check whether it is valid bootloader or not if it is which will be obvious because keys will be matching and it will allow to boot now you you made your own operating system you installed it so you have your own bootloader secure boot feature is enabled in that case you will not be able to boot your operating system because the public key which is inside a uefi is provided by microsoft which will not match with the bootloader which you you created it won't be matching so if it doesn't match uefi won't allow you to boot so with this tpm you will be able to connect a tpm a device to it you will be able to put on your key into it and that key you will be able to use to boot up your operating system that is how it is so these kind of features you will only find in enterprise level enterprise grade motherboards so the point which i want to make is you can connect a tpm based device to it you will be able to save the digital certificates into it public keys private keys passwords you'll be able to set save into this now you see this connect connector here that is your thunderbolt connector apart from this radiator and three fans I figured out I can connect even more four different fans I can connect to this motherboard to cool down my entire system. So here you see a BIOS button. Now for example you want to update your BIOS or you want to update your UEFI. What is normally what we do uh, one way is you go inside your UEFI. It has to be UEFI then only the internet connection will work. You go inside your UEFI and connect to the internet and from there see if the update is available but here it's very easy what you can do you go to your uh, asus website download the update in your pen drive connect the pen drive to this slot it's clearly written here bios you connect the pen drive here and power on your system and click this button once bios button the moment you click it what it will be doing it will be going inside your usb drive which is connected here here sorry and it will update the bios for you asus hats off for that feature and that's all from my side in next video, I will talk about the UEFI settings of this motherboard and how you can configure red UEFI settings and the UEFI is amazing. So I must show you that. Please like and subscribe. Thank you.